I'm joined now in the studio by political journalist Daisy McAndrew. Morning, Daisy. Morning. Uh, so here we are. We've got Therese. Let's focus first of all on Theresa May and where yeah. all of this leaves her. I mean, a fairly untenable position. It's a win, but it's not a win. Uh, where is she? What does she do now? Well, it's interesting, Vinny, they're showing the front pages of the papers. And of course, they are saying that it's a triumph, but it's going to be a short-lived triumph. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, in some ways, I was watching it all last night. I was here commenting and thinking, Yes, she has got this, this great coup through, but it's rather like me getting my kids to bed on time by promising them that they'll have chocolate for breakfast. It's, it's not going to last, and they're going to be terribly disappointed when they get porridge, not chocolate. And that's sort of what her MPs are going to feel like when they, he, she comes back from Brussels saying, I'm sorry, I promised you, you know, this great uh, rabbit out of the hat, but I've produced the same old deal. So she is going to come back on Valentine's Day on February the 14th, and I suspect with very little new to offer these MPs who do did toe the line, who did support her, um, and I think you know, many of them doing it for her and for the government and to stop the Tory party splitting. And if we assume that that is what's going to happen, she'll come back pretty much back in the same place that she was before, before with her plan A, which never really became a plan yeah. B. Um, where does that leave the Brexit process? Does that mean us, we're inching closer and closer to a no-deal Brexit? I think that is definitely the negative way of looking at it last night and, and I was one of those who was saying I feel we are nearer a no-deal. Of course you know, the Cooper Amendment was you know, which would have delayed Article 50 and in a way uh, tried to stop a no-deal happening. Uh, that was voted down but that's not to say it couldn't resurrect in two weeks if people think okay we really are at crunch time now we have to resurrect an amendment similar to the Cooper one and um, we must delay Article 50 or we will be faced um, with, with crashing out of the EU. I think that, again there are an awful, as we know there always would be, a lot of machinations going on in the background um, and I think the one to really watch is this thing that's been called the Malthouse Compromise. It sounds like a thriller or something. This was um, a meeting between, if you would think, arch enemies within the Conservative Party. Nicky Morgan, uh, former Cabinet Minister, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Chairman of of uh, the ERG, the very, very pro-Brexit group. Now, these two actually first met each other 25 years ago at Oxford University, although they sit at opposite wings of the party. I think they are quite good friends. They got together in the parliamentary office of Kit Malthouse, uh, who's a junior minister, used to be Boris Johnson's right-hand man when he was London mayor. Uh, other members from both wings of the party came together over the last few days, primarily to say, this is going to break up the Conservative Party. We must do something. They've come together with this compromise. On, it looks like it is a new backstop. Um, and if the backstop doesn't, if the new backstop doesn't work, it's a contained, organised, uh, no deal Brexit. If you can, <laughs> if that's not an oxymoron. Yeah. Uh, now, interestingly, they had two meetings with the Prime Minister on Thursday and on Monday. Apparently, Monday's meeting was described as rather fruity, and the Prime Minister did not uh, like what she was hearing. But she came round to it and then said, quite surprisingly, yesterday she was actively looking at the Malthouse Compromise, and I think that swung a lot of votes. But she will now have to follow that through, and she will have to uh, look at it further. It wasn't one of the amendments that was voted on yesterday, so really we don't know very much about it. Lots of the Remainers were aghast that Remainers like Nicky Morgan were you know, sipping from the same cup as Jacob Brees-Mogg um, and were prepared to put their name to this compromise, but I think that is the one to watch today. I mean, that's quite amazing if there was that sort of a solution, because that kind of creative thinking is what's been uh, sorely lacking so far. Trying exactly. to find an alternative to this Irish backstop, which of course is at the heart uh, of the whole debate at the moment. Uh, I want to just end. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of papers in the UK characterising yep. this as uh, a win. Uh, they're obviously just seeing things through British eyes, aren't they? They have no idea how this is going to play in Brussels. I think yes and no. To, to some of us who think this is a short term win, uh, yes, some of these very positive headlines like, you know, she did it and almost you know, what a hero seem a bit over the top. I suppose if you are being very fair and were to think, well, if they did say, if, if even the right-leaning newspapers didn't give credit where credit's due, it would look terribly churlish. When you think that she had the biggest parliamentary defeat a prime minister has had since the 1920s, to then come back from that scale of defeat and get a deal, albeit not the deal that the EU um, has okayed, but the deal that she magics up, ma magicked up uh, on her own yesterday. Of course, they were going to be a bit more positive. Again, some of the more left-leaning papers 
have been a bit more realistic and said, I think particularly the independent, I don't know if we can uh, see it there, has said uh, something along the lines of, yes, you know, she did get a deal. Six minutes later, the EU was poo-pooing that deal, which was the reality last night. But a win is a win.